So, so my first story is kind of just me being a weird kid. Well, my siblings and I being a weird kid. So when I was little, my grandpa o owned this farm. And after school, every single day, me and my bigger sister and my bigger brother would go to his house and he had a cow that we named Elvis and we would ride him every single day. And I was always scared to get on it at first because I was in kindergarten, I think. And my sister would kind of push me onto it. So I ended up loving this cow and all of us did. But he was a bull. So while we were at school one day, my grandpa decided, hey, I'm just going to sell him because I'm afraid that he's going to hurt these kids. So we came back after he sold him and we were all very distraught, but we kind of felt better after a bowl of ice cream. Honestly, that's how we got over it, was a bowl of ice cream, because we were all very young kids. All younger than high school age, so. Ice cream fixed it. Ice cream heals broken hearts over loss of riding your cow. Yay! Ow. That was a pathetic story, but that's okay. Because we have better ones next. My first story <laughs> is... Starts out with... Well, when I was about in seventh grade, we moved to Florida. Me, my dad, and my grandma moved in with my mom's brother. And we lived in this one-bedroom apartment. And then we moved into a three-bedroom house. So, well, one night, we decided to go get a smoker because like to smoke meats because dad was dad's huge on cooking and so we did this and this happened to be time that it was spring break well we lived in a city that was spring known break. for spring break like the entire month of april and half of the next month were completely just nuts sounds like the stereotype it like, was. Florida is literally the stereotype for spring break, isn't it? it? <laughs> yeah. So, we went down the main street, which is called Front, Front, Front Beach Drive. We were literally going three miles an hour because all these kids, I say kids and they're older than me, were driving up and <laughs> we're down We're getting old. Way. <laughs> we're driving down the ways and it was completely packed and everybody, there was playing music and having a good time. Well, we were driving down and this guy jumps out of his car, grab, like, jumps onto the car in front of him and starts beating in the windows. <laughs> like, Spring break. <laughs> <laughs> and so he had, inevitably pulls the guy out of the car and they get into a fight. But my <laughs> uncle... They just get into a fight. Nobody cares about that, right? Yeah. <laughs> my uncle, being just him, yells out the window, Hey, dude, you forgot your car! <laughs> and we're just like seeing the guy beat on the window. We're like, stop, <laughs> stop it right now! But inevitably, mm -hmm. we went and got the smoker, and then we took the highway <laughs> rather than Front Beach Drive. Very wise. <laughs> so this next story is a very, very odd story. So it was about four or five years ago, and I'd had a long morning. I think me and my mom were doing gardening or something outside. And I was really sweaty. So about in the afternoon, I went to go take a shower. But I didn't lock the door, which after this, lock your doors, kids. Lock all doors. All shower doors. All of them. Every single one. Most shower doors don't have locks on them. Anyways, let's just establish this. Her mom is completely afraid of snakes. She screams if she sees something that remotely has a tail. She screamed at a worm yesterday. <laughs> yes. That was quite funny. Also, she moved a thing, and I was digging <laughs> in this... It, it was a flower thing, but it was really tall, and there was a metal piece there. So she moved it and screamed as a lizard crawled across my hand. Scared me half to death, because I'm like, oh. And my mom scared me <laughs> so badly, because I wasn't in it, I was kind of just to the side, and I didn't see anything, and she just screamed, and it made me almost scream. It was Anyways, we're getting off topic. <laughs> so back to the story. So I was in the shower, and I had just washed my hair, and I was about to, you know, rinse it, do all that. Yeah, I was about to rinse my hair, and my mom comes busting in the door, and she's like, Lauren, you need to come outside now! 
So I hurriedly put on a towel because I don't know what she needs. So I just put on a towel and I jump in my dad's boots and I run outside. And keep in mind, we live in the middle of absolute nowhere. Mm -hmm. So you don't typically see a car going by. So I thought it was okay that I was in a towel. But today it happened that about three trucks decided that they'd go by. <laughs> my luck, exactly. So I run outside and we have a field just left to our house and well actually around all sides because it's a farm. Yeah. <laughs> so I see a snake that my mom's freaking out about and she won't get near it. She just hands me a hoe and says kill the snake. So I try to kill the snake but there's so many cars going by and my towel's slipping and I don't know what to do <laughs> so I'm just trying to kill it while not flashing everybody that decides they have to go by today. And so I do my best and it won't let me hit it. It's going too fast. So I tell my mom, I can't kill it. I have to go get some clothes on so I can actually use both my hands to kill the snake. So I run inside, I grab some clothes, and then I go back outside and the snake has moved almost to the field. So I run after it and I start to like try to hit its head and it goes into the field and my mom freaks out. She's like, you need to go into that field and you need to kill that snake. I say, Mom, I can't. It's already gone into the snake hole, and I'm not digging underneath freaking the earth into the core just to kill the snake. So I finally calm her down, and she goes inside, and I can't take a shower after that because I'm already freezing cold, and <laughs> all the water's gone because I've wasted it all, and I've wasted all my energy, so now I lock my doors, and you understand why. <laughs> so, note to self. Lock all your doors or your mom will run in screaming about a snake and she'll make you go outside with the towel on. Oh, I get what you meant by lock the door. I thought your shower actually had a lock <laughs> yeah. on it for a while. And I was it's like the bathroom door. Yeah, I was like, what? <laughs> Lauren, most showers don't have doors <laughs> that lock on them. I feel dumb. Uh, that's alright, honey. We love you anyway. Or not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this one actually has me and Lauren both in it. But I'm going to tell it from my perspective because I have no idea where she was. So. <laughs> I don't even know where I was. <laughs> so we were on the ag building welding. And we're both FFA students. At our school. Yeah. Clarifying. It was at our school. This wasn't at our <laughs> houses. We're not that sketchy. So there is. Um, there was a guy. We'll call him. George. George. So. George was digging in the metal, and all of a sudden, he goes, oh my gosh, there's a snake. So we're all like, what? Snake? What is a snake doing? So a bunch of the guys get, um, our teacher, or actually, our kind of assistant teacher, because our teacher wasn't there that day, to come out there and <laughs> to go kill it. Well, by the time everybody gets out there and looks, it's gone. Like, completely gone. So we're trying to figure out what kind of snake it is to tell if it's poisonous or not. Because pretty much, there's so many different snakes around here. Well, they're looking through the metal trying to find it. And I'm getting close because I don't mind snakes. They're like, I'm not afraid of snakes or spiders and stuff like that. I'm afraid of- I think at this point I literally pushed to the front of the line because all of the other girls were screaming and freaking out over the snake. And I was like, I want to see it. I didn't get to see it the first time. I want to see it this time. So, the guys are pulling out- pipes like long long <laughs> long pipes. metal pipes that are just laying in the side of the wood mm -hmm. or not the wood all, the metal <laughs> like the metal thing and so they're picking them up and hitting them on the ground so they do this to about 10 and then all of a sudden I see a tail and I'm like guys look there's a tail that that one has one in and they're like what and they pick it up and they hit it again and then more <laughs> of it comes out I think so that at that like, point the tip of the tail actually broke yeah. off <laughs> And so they're hitting it on the ground and trying to get the snake out. Well, eventually they get the snake out. Well, actually... They take it outside yeah, and get it out. Yeah, they take it outside. Yeah, they... Taking it across the floor of the shop out into the gravel. They smash the yeah, tail the into the ground and they just kind of drug it out of the door. <laughs> and so then they get the rest of the snake out and kill it. And then our principal comes <laughs> out there and <laughs> picks up the snake and walks past, like... Keep in mind, it's a dead snake with its guts everywhere because its tail's been broken off and it's been killed and stomped on by lots of boots. <laughs> because we live in Hicktown. Yeah. 
there's like a gravel area. Then there's a field, literally a field next to our <laughs> thing. And then they have an airfield, which is like a tiny one for like spraying planes for crops. So he goes out and throws it way past that because he doesn't want us kids playing with the, guess what the snake was? A copperhead. So he's going to pick up a snake. That's a copperhead, mm -hmm. but he doesn't want us to touch it. With his bare hand, like, he didn't get a glove or anything. He no. used his bare hand. It was just crazy. <laughs> it was and actually, this isn't the weirdest thing. Like, around the same time, we had <laughs> our neighbor's pig come into the same shop, into the same metal room, mm -hmm. and we had to herd it out, and we had to bring in a whole bunch of people just to come in and get the pig <laughs> out. We've also had cats ride under cars. Oh, yeah. We had uh, one of our classmates... A cat got underneath her car and rode with her to school. <laughs> and then, by the end of the day, she finds out that her other cat had done the same yeah. thing. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Our school's insane. Our school is insane. So, this next story is actually kind of a scary one for me. It's... I almost died in this story. I think you're exaggerating <laughs> a little. Alright, I'm exaggerating a little bit. So... My family and I were taking a vacation to Washington, D.C. to go visit our aunt. And we had a break, and so we were going to go walking around and visit all the Smithsonian's that are in Washington, D.C. Because there's, like, a bunch of them. I don't even know how many. There's so many. So we were walking down the street, and we were kind of looking at the old buildings, thinking of which one to go into next. And my phone starts going off because there's an amber alert about something around the area but I don't know what it is because my phone's that phone was junk that was an old phone it wasn't working properly anyway and there's this man that I see laying on a bench and he looks really scraggly and he has old clothing on that's really dirty and he just gets up and he grabs my arm literally won't let it go and he started talking to me about something I can't remember what it was it was so long ago it was like three years ago I think and he starts, I think he was talking about my phone and how it was going off. And then he wouldn't let go and he started going on to conversations about, like, how the day was and what we were doing there. And finally, he lets go and I have an imprint of his hand on my arm. Like, it didn't bruise or anything, but it just, he was holding it so tightly that it left it on there. And it really freaked me out and I had no idea what to do. So I kind of just started to walk away and I didn't. He was still talking, but I was just walking away, and my mom kind of looked at me, and she kind of just pushed me along. She's like, let's go, let's go. <laughs> so that was the story of how I almost died in Washington, D.C. with my family watching. That sounds horrific. Like, the way <laughs> you explain it, it just, and then the story's like, that's how it, it was in my head. Bad, but it wasn't as bad as it could have been. It could have been a lot I worse. I could have died! So, for our final story, we decided to tell you guys kind of how we became friends. <laughs> it's kind of a long, crazy joyride, actually. Do you want so, me to start? Or? It actually... Well, yeah. <laughs> sorry. You know it, it actually starts with her hating me. So, I had just come from one of my other schools, and I just came to this school for high school. And I didn't know hardly anybody because I'd only been there in third and fourth grade. So I kind of just made friends with the person that was in my last hour class, actually. That's <laughs> how we met was in last hour class on the first day of school. And she seemed to pick up my name really quickly, but for some reason it took me the first month of school to figure out that her name was Claire. I thought we were going to call her Adam. I forgot, so I just kind of said Claire. Like, I was thinking in my head, I couldn't remember. So what are we going to call her, Claire or Adam? Claire. I already said Claire. I don't want to repeat that. Okay. So, Claire was being really nice to me, and I didn't really know anybody, so she was going to show me around and kind of push friends onto me, like, here, be friends with Lauren. <laughs> well, what comes to find out is Claire is my best friend, and I tend to be a jelly person because Claire tends to make new friends very quickly and then make them the best friend and kind of ditch me and then... Eventually, when they upset her or ditch her, she comes back to me, which is... So she just hated me, and I had no idea why, and I was like, why do I have an enemy? I'm just trying to be nice and make friends. It didn't help that on our birthday, she completely <laughs> ignored me the entire day, like, She, she oh, told me that she was gonna joke Lauren's around. It's birthday! Happy birthday, Lauren! That's actually how I figured out that we have the same birthday. Mm -hmm. It was about the second week of school, I think. Second yeah. or third week of school. Because we... Yeah. We go back to in August instead of September like mm -hmm. we need to. 
<laughs> but so she, Claire told me that she was going to say happy birthday to me and pretend like she got me this big gift, even though we just met each other, and completely ignore Angelica until the last bit of school. So that's exactly what she did, and that's why she became so mad at me and hated me. Well, inevitably, the friend, Claire, <laughs> tend to get a new friend, ditched her, and kind of yeah. me both. So, she actually became friends with one of my friends, again, who I actually did know from third and fourth grade, but we didn't really talk that much. She kind of, she was like, Lauren, you're here, and I'm like, hi, I don't really remember you that much, <laughs> but hi. So, we stayed friends with that friend, but we weren't real close. We, well, inevitably, it ended up that she added us all in a group chat. We became, like, friends, but not close. So we would be <laughs> texting her, and then be texting each other, being, what? Yeah, we'd like, be in the group message, and she'd be talking about, I don't know, we'll just say chickens, because that's just the random thing that popped in my head. She'll be talking about chickens, and then we'll just be in there, like, what is going on? I don't understand any of this. And so we just kind of bonded over not understanding what our other friend was talking about. And cheer helped so much because then mm -hmm. we were we were generally in groups together because she's a flyer, I'm a back spot. And yeah, and I actually got her into cheerleading this year because I was tired of being alone. Actually it was last year, but yeah. It started um, last year, it was the last season and it was during basketball. Mm -hmm. And I got her into it. And so I kind of helped her with everything in that, and we became friends and really bonded, so, and, and we really, like, thought it was amazing that we have the exact same birthday, the exact same favorite color. She got me into YouTube, she got me into anime, and now we listen to K-pop, and it's just... It's, it's <laughs> been a wild ride. Yeah, and I'm sure there's so many more things that we're both gonna get into mm -hmm. that we're just gonna freak out about and love. Like, I'm into Pokemon Go right now. Like, I know that's a big craze. But honestly, I loved it so much as a child, and I would play it all the time, that I'm trying to get her into it, but it's got a lot of physicality into it. That's not us. So I don't play it that often, and I can't where I live, because I live in the middle of nowhere, and no Pokemon will spawn. So I have to come to town and make her walk with me. And my phone won't download the app, so I can't get yeah. it, because my phone's a piece of trash. <laughs> that Lauren finally broke. It was like Yes, I finally broke it on accident, because I'm clumsy. <laughs> she dropped it up. I accidentally <laughs> dropped it at the pool. <laughs> so now it has a crack along the bottom. But, but that's okay. okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. And that's also kind of why we started YouTube, because she got me into YouTube. So, which I know we've talked about that before, but we didn't really go into depth of why we were actually doing this together, not just separately. Oh, and this is also our notepad of what all we've been doing tonight, because as you can tell, we've been wearing the same clothes for the past few videos. I thought you were going to say past few days. I was like, <laughs> I changed, thank no. you. <laughs> no, I actually changed. Like, it may take me a while, but I will change that day. Change your attitude. This is our friendship. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. This is us. So, yeah. I mean, I don't really know exactly what all we're going to be doing after this. As you can tell, our quality and our videos have been getting better. I've just recently got a new phone, and so we started to record on that. Rather than my laptop. <laughs> Yeah, kind of got a bad camera, but that's okay because we are learning, we are getting better, and I hope that you appreciate that and will continue to support us. Yay! So if you like this video, hit the thumbs up button and please subscribe and also comment down below because we need more ideas. We are running out. Just kidding. We actually have a lot of ideas that we need to do. <laughs> but um, yeah, just leave down what you want below, probably down there, and... You guys have really good ideas, so leave us pretty much anything that you want us to do, because we'll do it. We got no lives. We'll, we'll do anything. <laughs> we'll do anything for a couple of views. <laughs> we also like to hear what you guys think of the videos, so mm -hmm. please tell us that, too. And yes. just keep watching yeah. and supporting us, hopefully. Thank you. Bye. Hi. Hi. So, why do hummingbirds hum? I don't know, because they're hummingbirds. Because they don't know the words. <laughs>